Okay. Green on the left, notes on the right if you're not there yet. <clears throat> Okay, so when it comes to the three main probability lessons we're going to have, um, I want to kind of put them in perspective of how they're all kind of related to each other. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, if I was to say that probability is a complete heading of what we're talking about, okay, <clears throat> what I want to talk about is, is I want to show you that I guess this is one way to think about it is that probability if you could possibly arguably anyway be split up into two types of probability okay theoretical probability and experimental I'm gonna run out of room probability okay so What's the difference? Well, that's actually what this lesson's about. Now, just to give you guys, uh, uh, you know, a, a heads up, and, and that is <clears throat> theoretical, a type of theoretical probability is what we just learned last lesson. Simple events is a type of theoretical, okay? So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of teaching it backwards, but if I would teach you this lesson before I actually taught you probability of simple events, it'd probably be more confusing. So you kind of have a background of what probability is, and now we're kind of going backwards and saying, okay, I just taught you a theoretical event, or I'm sorry, a theoretical probability, which was simple events. Now I want to talk about how is, does it differ then from the other type, the experimental. All right, so <clears throat> before I do that, I, I just want to front load it with this term right here. This actually has an asterisk because I don't believe it's in your notes, but it should be because this will pop up, and that is uniform probability model, everyone. Now, this is how it could easily be described. It says, a model in which each outcome has an equal probability of occurring. Okay? Now, here's what I'm talking about. If this is a spinner, if this is a spinner and we have an A, a B, a C, a D, you go, okay, what's the chance of spinning an A? Okay, that's kind of a simple event that we were just talking about. Now, I want to clarify this, though. This is a perfect time to clarify it. If we have a spinner, A, B, and C, you cannot say that the probability of spinning an A is one out of three. This is not true. Okay? What when it comes to simple events, this is implying that there are three equal chances or three equal spaces, okay, that are possible outcomes. This, however, are not equal. I mean, realistically, you could split this in half right here and say the probability of spinning an A is two out of four, which is a one half, a 50% chance of spinning an A. That is accurate. Okay, not this. So be very careful. That's what this is talking about. And, and right here it just says, rolling any of the numbers on a number cube, if that's what you're trying to do, but you have to keep in mind that they have to have a, the same size face, right? If some funky number cube that is altered in some way, then sometimes certain numbers will have, you know, a chance of coming up very similar to this right here. Okay, they all have to be equal size. All right. With that said, let's get going on the two major, uh, the two major probabilities that are, you know, two major vocab words that we are going to talk about. And that the first one we are in there is a typo. Yes, yeah, sorry. It, the first one is a the theoretical probability. Everyone. Theoretical probability. For those of you in here that are my big time readers and in A B class, what's the root word for theoretical theory. theory okay a theory and if you don't already know this right a theory is um, is a I guess a conclusion based off of ideas or a lot of times in this case based off of math okay so in theory something you know you can come to a conclusion based off of 
ideas, okay? Maybe not actual facts, okay? Or maybe you come to a conclusion based off of some facts. Doesn't It's just, though, however, a theory, okay? Now, same thing can be said about theoretical probability. Here's what the book says. This is what should occur in a probability experiment. What should occur in a probability experiment. So using math and what we just did last lesson with simple events, this is what should occur when you actually play a game. Okay. So for example, kind of like on our last lesson, right? If you have six sides on a number cube, then that means that the probability of rolling a four is one out of six because it's on four is on one of the sides, right? So just a review of simple events. In theory, we should roll a four one out of every six times we roll that number cube. Now in contrast with theoretical probability, the other one is experimental probability, everyone? That was an easy one. What's the root word to experimental? Experiment. Yeah, experiment, right? It's it's so you you're in science class, you do an experiment, it's actually the action, the actual doing, right? Well, that's actually what this is. So experimental probability is what actually occurs in a probability experiment. Not what should occur mathematically, but you actually do the experiment and what is actually occurring, what actually comes up. So maybe instead of the four being rolled one out of six times, the four is rolled twice in six rolls of a number cube. You roll it six times, and it popped up, it popped up, the four popped up twice. This is saying mathematically it probably should pop up once out of six times. But what actually happened was it came up twice. Mathematically, do you guys know like if something happens, something occurs more than what the theoretical probability is? Okay, you guys follow me? So you actually do the experiment and the favorable outcome c pops up more often than what the math said. Does anyone know what we call that? Good luck. Lucky. Right? That's kind of, that's what that is. Yeah, it's good luck. It's lucky. All right? Sometimes, you know, so, and that's kind of informal, right? It's not some formal definition I'm giving you guys. But if you know the probability of something happening, it, but it happens more than, you know, what, you know, people play the lotto, right? You have a one in a million chance and you win the lotto. Well, guess what? You're lucky. Why? Because you should have played it a million times before you win it once. When in reality, maybe you played it five times and, and that's, it happened mathematically more often than it should have. You're lucky, okay? So that's a lot of times, to, and that's just a little bonus thing, of what I'm talking about, kind of to compare with what we're, we talk about in real life, okay? So with that said, let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of these examples in the book. All right, so you have your book. Let's go ahead, flip over to 478. You can continue on your paper or take out another one. It's up to you. All right, now let's see if I can fit all this under the dot cam here for our lesson. All right. All right, here we go. So on page 478, let's take a look at problem number one. All right. So let's close read it. At number one on 478, it says, the table shows the Results. of an experiment in which a number cube was rolled. Find the experimental probability. of rolling a four, then compare it to the theoretical probability. Okay? So, if we take a look, all right, at this problem, this is, and it's not, you know, experimental probability would be like you playing the game. They're saying that you don't have to play the game or do the game. It, it's already been done for you, and they're just showing the results, okay? So, 
first off, okay, problem number one is it's asking, and we'll say step one, is let's go ahead and write down the experimental probability. So the experimental probability is, what do they say again? Uh, the experimental probability of rolling a four. So the four right there was rolled three times. Now, obviously I probably should find out my, po I could find out my possible outcomes first. So in this case, or I should say the number of total rolls, two, three, plus four more is seven, plus three is 10, plus three is 13, plus two is 15. So it looks like during this game, they rolled the dice 15 times. Okay, the top number of course is the favorable outcomes. Well, rolling a four, they're talking about, they rolled three times. Now, of course, considering that this is a ratio written as a fraction, we can simplify it, divide both by three, and get a one out of five chance. Step two, now comes the theoretical. Okay, this was simple events, right? This is what we talked about. So we don't have to worry about the outcome of the actual thing. We're just looking at the game itself like we did last lesson. So if we're going to write this, it talks about finding the experimental probability of rolling a four, right? It's talking about a number cube. Well, there are six sides on the number cube. And therefore, four is on one side. Now, with it this close, you could probably tell which one, you know, you could look at them and see which one show, rolled up more than others. If it's not this close, I'm going to pretend like it wasn't this close because I want to prepare you for the whole lesson, and that is step three, you have two choices. You can either get common denominators or you can convert it to a percent. The reason is, is because you want to basically compare apples with apples, oranges with oranges. You want them to look the same, be in the same form where it's much easier to compare. Okay? So in this case, like I said, this case, you, pro you, you can still, they're so close, you could still compare no. But if that's not the case, you could find a common denominator. Now, more than likely, a lot of you guys are not going to want to find a common denominator. You can if you want. Okay? Especially if it's very simple. But you can also use a calculator and say, okay, 1 divided by 5 equals 0.2. Move it over twice. That's 20%. 1 divided by 6 equals that. And I move this over twice, and it comes out to 16.6, .6, obviously, repeating decimal with bar notation, percent. Okay, either one's okay. Percentages usually work out best. So I have theoretical, I have my experimental, okay, and then we can call this step four. They say compare it. So you just write it out. They're talking about writing a description out. So you'd say the experimental probability was 20% or 1 out of 5 while the theoretical probability was 16.6 .6 repeating decimal percent. You could say the experimental
probability uh, the experimental probability occurred more often than it should have. So just drawing a conclusion off of what the, the two percents mean. Okay, questions on that? Not hard, right? Still pretty simple. Just have to take a little extra time to write. All right, here's the one I want you guys to try out. Okay, take a look at number six. Now, I do want to give you some information, though. Okay. Um, on number six, I think I was going to have you guys do C. Do 6C. Um, write down 1 16th. Okay. That is, sorry, that is the theoretical probability. I don't want you to have to solve that. I don't even think I've taught you that yet or any part of that. So that's a theoretical probability. That's what that's referring to. Okay. So you'll need that information to do to do 6C. All right. So 6C. All right. Go. How many of you are still working on that? Okay. Okay, anyone still working on that one? Okay, give you guys about 30 seconds.
Okay. Go ahead, turn to your neighbor and share. Go. Experimental probability is 60% and the theoretical probability is 6.5%. All right, here we go. Number six. Let's see if I can fit it in the camera. Yeah. All right, so number six. I just said to check out C, right? So it says the table shows the results of an experiment in which two spinners, like the one shown above, were each spun 50 times. It's talking about this up here. So. I told you guys that um, that the theoretical number six C. Okay, the theoretical probability was one in sixteen. The experimental probability. Well, it's spun 50 times, and I take a look. It says the sum of 8. So if I look down here, the sum of 8 came up 8 times. Now, again, it's kind of it's harder to compare, right, unless you convert it to a percent. 1 divided by 16 gives a 0 0.625. So if I move it over twice, it's 6.25%. A little over 6%. 8 divided by 50 equals 0.16, which is 16%. So you would just say, just like we did last time, the experimental probability was 16%. While the theoretical probability, sorry, I'm squeezing it in here, was 6.25%. And again, just the conclusion could be the same, right? The experimental <coughs> probability. occurred more often than it should have. Okay, questions about that? All right, let's take a look at another type of problem. Let's look at four on page 478, problem number four. All right, let's close read this one. It says, the table shows the results of a about the most popular pets among 7th grade students at Stanion Middle School. Out of a group of 327th graders, predict how many would choose cats as their favorite pet. So what we're doing is we're using the experimental probability, okay, which, guys, we've talked about this before. This is like sampling, all right, and we're going to use it to predict like the whole population, or in this case, predict something that has more seventh graders. Okay? So, here's how we do it. All right, step one is write down your experimental probability 
of whatever subject they're talking about. In this case, right, they want to know about choosing cats. So if I take a look, writing my experimental probability based off of this survey, right, I have 12 plus 11 is 33. I'm sorry, 23. Plus 6 is 29. Plus 5 is 34. Plus 6 is 40. All right, so we have a total of 40 students who were asked. And remember, favorable outcome in this case, we're talking about cats, so it's 11 out of 40. Now, step two is they want us to use that to predict, instead of 40 seventh graders, what if there were 320? So we actually use our old friend, the proportion. Now just remember, I can use cross products. In this case, though, it's kind of nice. I don't have to because I know that 40 times 8 is 320. So they gave us an easy one here. 11 times 8 gives us 88. So what that means is, is out of a similar group of 327th graders, predict how many would choose cats as their favorite. 88 7th graders. Oops. It, they're not asking you to compare them or to write a conclusion whatsoever. Okay? They're just, we just put our units. 88 seventh graders. A little reminder if I was using cross products, right, and this was X instead of 88, remember 11 times 320 equals 40 times X. So you'd simplify this side and then you'd divide both sides by 40, and that would also give you 88. <coughs> Bless you. All right, any questions on that? Okay, I'm going to have you guys try problem number eight. Let's do this. Let's do 8A only. 8A only. On page four, I'm sorry, I should say 479 because that's where the eight is. Okay, go. Anyone still need any more time on that? Okay. Okay, 30 seconds, go ahead and turn to your neighbor and share. Go.
All right, here we go. So I'll just read it out loud. It says, the table shows the result of a survey of students at Montez Middle School. Students were asked who they plan to vote for in an upcoming election for student body president. Suppose all 520 students at the school vote. All right. So again, they want to know from the sample, they want to predict the population. So we turn around and the experimental probability, meaning that from the survey, um, they have, let's see, 11, 23 plus 9 is 32. Uh, 32 plus 16 plus 12 so a total of 60 students were asked and it says a says predict how many votes Carlos would receive so out of 60 Carlos ended up according to the table with 12 okay so then we turn around and say Suppose all 520 students uh, at the school vote. So it's not just 60 students. They're asking about 520 of them. All right. For this sake, I'm going to use I'm going to use cross products and say 520 times 12 is equal to 60 times the blank, which we'll say is x. So if I simplify the left side, 520 times 12, we get 6,240 equals 60x, divide both sides by 60, and we get 104. How many votes? 104, put our units there, votes. All right, questions on 8A. Okay, remember on these A's and C's and stuff that we're doing together, I'm having you do part of them, don't forget to go back and do the rest, okay? Each of them are a separate problem. All right, any questions about uh, theoretical versus experimental? The difference in the two? All right, and that's our lesson.